Jesus' words challenged the people of his time and us as well. In our desire to show that we are holy, we might also give too much credence to externals, following rules without thinking about the intention behind them. Jesus reminds us that we do not make ourselves holy by our actions. Rather, we become holy when we allow God's Spirit to transform us. Our actions should be an expression of the conversation of our heart to God and to God's ways. Our entrance in Children of God this mass we shall be praying for all your personal intentions it is the 22nd Sunday in ordinary time in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and with, with your spirit. spirit my dear brothers and sisters let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord of our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I am teaching you, and do them that you may live, and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they will hear these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word is, O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Beloved brothers, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this 
to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem. They saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. It. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. For from within, out of the heart of men, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is a wise person of prayer who once wrote these words. When I was young, I was a revolutionary. My prayer to God was, Lord, give me the energy to change the world. As I approached middle age and realized that my life was half gone without my changing a single soul, I changed my prayer to, Lord, Give me the grace to change all those who come into contact with me. Just my family and friends and I shall be satisfied. Now that I am old and my days are numbered, I've begun to see how foolish I have been. My one prayer now is, Lord, give me the grace to change myself. If I had prayed for this from the heart, I would not have wasted my life. Wise words. They point to the simple truth that no one of us has the capacity to change another person. The only person we can really change, my dear brothers and sisters, is ourselves. 
When we learn that lesson well, we begin to realize that pointing fingers at the behavior of others is an exercise in futility because it prevents us from pointing our fingers at the one person that we have the right to criticize, namely ourselves. Tough lesson to learn. We live in an age of finger pointing. Look at our politics. It's an exercise in finger pointing. Whether the candidates are national or local, issues are replaced by accusations. But we don't need politics to teach us how to point fingers. We are pretty Olympic at it ourselves. We love to point fingers at each other and notice what everyone else is doing wrong. We nitpick everyone else's behavior to death. And don't we love to gloat when we are proven right and they are proven wrong. The Pharisees and scribes in today's gospel are doing precisely that. They are nitpicking the actions of the disciples. They are finding fault with what they do. And by the standards of the day, they are indeed breaking the Jewish law. But Jesus turns on them and actually points out that it is truly wrong are those things that come from within a person. And nothing could be worse from within ourselves than taking cheap shots at everyone else while never, never ever bothering to look at ourselves. And this should not be confused, my dear friends, with being willing to speak out for those unjustly treated and disenfranchised from what is justly that. That is a function of prophetic witness to our faith. What we speak about here is the temptation we face to pick at the behavior of others because it differs from our own. We often have this tendency to forget that the gospel is not a tool by which we measure the action of others. But rather, the gospel is a mirror by which we judge ourselves. It takes courage to look in the mirror and even greater courage to change what we see. But unless we are willing to realize that the only person we can really change is ourselves, and unless we are willing to start making those changes, that we end up wasting our lives. We look out at others rather than looking at ourselves. And when we do that, we waste our lives and hardly contribute towards the building up of the reign of God in our world. People are concerned constantly, my dear friends, about their external appearance. In fact, most of us are willing to spend lots of money and undergo cosmetic surgeries just to maintain our young looks. We grow old, but we hate to look old. We think that a young and beautiful external appearance is a sure indicator of a good personality. What many do not realize is that if our internal condition is not in conformity with our external appearance, we turn out to be the worst and perhaps the most obnoxious person. This is what the Lord is saying in the Gospel today. It is not his external looks that makes a person dirty and unpleasant, but the internal conditions, one's attitudes, motivations, spiritual life. We need to constantly look at our heart. We need to constantly look at our soul. Spend most of your time looking at these rather than merely getting caught up in our external appearance. A woman may have won the title of Miss Universe because of her spectacular beauty, wit and intelligence. But if she is selfish and greedy, then perhaps she's too unattractive and the most disgusting person on earth. Jesus has invariably condemned the Pharisees for their hypocrisy. The sin of hypocrisy means simply the discrepancy of the external with the internal. The non-conformity of what we manifest externally with what we have internally in our hearts and minds. 
Unfortunately, the sin seems to be very common among most of us. There is no transparency in our personality and we become like actors. In common parlance, we call such people plastic, meaning that they are not really authentic and in the face of intense pressure and heat, they really melt and expose their true colors. We've become experts in building a beautiful and formidable facade that nobody can penetrate and decipher what is inside. But we are warned. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but God looks into the heart. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7. We cannot hide from God. He can see the innermost recesses of our heart. And that is why hypocrisy will just make us look worse in the eyes of God. Instead of trying to put up this nice external facade, the Lord invites us to be more true to ourselves. In that way, we become single-hearted and pure of heart. In the Beatitudes, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure or clean of heart, for they shall see God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Who are those with these pure and clean hearts? In Psalm 24 it says, Who may go up to the mount of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? The clean of heart, the clean of hand, and pure of heart, who are not devoted to idols, who have not sworn falsely. Psalm 24 verses 3 and 4. Any kind of pretense and false appearance will also always work against us in the eyes of God. I pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that we don't get caught up in the externals and start judging people by what they do, how they act, what they say, their behavior. But I pray that each one of us get extremely caught up in the internals. What is our heart really saying? How clean is our soul? Are these presentable to God on the day of judgment? As much as we take so much of care and trouble over looking after the externals, our outward appearance, I pray that we spend as much time as possible making sure that we are clean from the inside. We now profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in kind of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon his pilot, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn to God, our loving Father, and ask Him for all our needs. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. All together, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that the Church will be a faithful bearer of God's first precepts, neither adding nor taking from God's law, but leading her people in the way of charity and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our politicians, that they establish laws that are just, protecting the vulnerable, safeguarding human dignity, 
and preserving the integrity of the natural world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who administer the law, that the law is understood and respected as a means of achieving a just society in which all people can live with dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christian people, that we seek a religion that is pure, attending to the needs of those in distress, living lives of goodness and kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions we now pray in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Father of love, in whom there is no variation or shadow, hear the prayers we offer this day and inspire us to be doers of the word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our of three hymn, Simple Gifts. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our God and the good of all this holy church. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that while it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
By the parted working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblations of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession, in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Oswald our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Our communion him. Our hearts were made for you, Lord. Let us pray. 
renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our recession hymn, Lightened by the Word. Lightened by the Word. 